Alrighty. Okay. Welcome back to Nick Lynch's Comic Corner. Classic slash non-classic. This is episode number 1921. Double shot number 1815. Excuse me. This Well, this time we had the follow-up trades from the previous uh, previous episode. Now, basically these two trades here are just pure setup for Shattered Grit. That's simply put what these two trades issues are. Uh, first up we have Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Volume 6, which collect issues 21 and 24. Yep. We still have Kyle Higgins on the writing here. Artwork by Jonas Surf and assistance by Jugas Kumar, this is 23. Uh, the cover by Jamal Campbell. Yep. Yeah, so after she explains basically what happened, and now I know what she is. So they kind of work together to figure out a way, and of course, take her to Permadelia, which appearance wise looks like Terra Venture. Yeah, it looks like the top of Terra Venture. I'm not really sure why. It just reminds me a lot of Terra Venture. And of course, they explore the face. Looks looks really nice. Like it's apparently its own city. And they build more stuff here with Finster's monsters. Yep. And apparently Finster will have Captain, but he's not the only one who have Captain here. And oh boy, you'll find out exactly who it is. And we have, apparently have it where Permadelia has got their own Megazord. Because all well, the, the, the Zords were hacked. Yeah, it's a Zord hack. And of course, then we have it where Zordon's return. Yep. Oh, yeah, we have Kimberly belling a giant rear vault of this buyback. He's actually not in these issues. Nope, he's not here. We have this space tree with this weird wizard. Actually, it popped up on the show. I do remember this wizard pop up there. He popped up for like one issue, I think it was. One episode? Yeah, about the one episode. You have that readout for a quick two-parter. And I'm glad they brought him back here. So apparently that, well, does mention basically, well, he does not by the mean grace. Like, apparently he, uh, as well as he regrets the events of Night Six and Epic, apparently all blame on him. So, why you tell him? Well, because he didn't want to go to the same thing. You have Saba stepping into. Of course, everybody just chipping around. By the way, this is like still not long after when when Tommy joined the team. So, everybody's like forward trusting with him. So, and apparently you have Saba talking to Finster. Which, by the way, in the show, these two never spoke to each other. Not once. Yes. So... Saba, of course, basically just chats in for a while. He's like a prisoner. And then we have Tommy talking to Kimberly. Really good. So we have Jason talking to Grace. And of course, they, and of, course they reveal something a little later on here. Yep. And you have Swat and Babu. And apparently they need to fix the palace, so they fixed it. Fixed her chair too. So they had to find Finster, and of course they do. They do eventually find him. And he has apparently like a lot of monsters out in the field. Yep. Of course, Grace works with the Rangers to basically make it a little more smoother. And of course, Finn slides the out of his cage. And yeah, it's revealed by Billy while looking through the place of the. He, he finds Draken, aka Tommy from the Ultimate Universe. Yes, apparently they got. Apparently. They got their hands on him somehow. It's not really explained how, they just did. At some point, they did get their hands on the evil Tommy. And of course, Fencer basically makes a little monster on the world, of course, of activating them all. And you have Billy talking to Lord Dracula. He's been here for months. 
and he talks like that afraid and he could tell what's away. And and the course arranges you with the various monsters to pop up that Finch are created. Yeah, and after dealing with them. Yeah, then we have Rhea looking through her magic telescope, which she did do in the show. Which is great to see that again. And of course, that can the Megazord. And of course, well, then the Rangers confront about the fact that, well, that she's got Draken. And it's like around, huh? And of course, Jason talks like, are you going to tell me eventually one? I don't think Tom was right. Tom was thinking, you know who he is? Yes, I do. I know where he's from. I know people he's killed. Rangers, he rangers, he's destroyed. Yep. So I think he's basically like made sure on the light side, and of course he just he rangers himself right away. But they can't. So Jason Reeve talks to Zordon about Draken, and of course he dresses by his full name, Jason Lee Scott. And you have Saba talking to Draken. He just fires it and just kind of releases him. And then eventually he does something completely unexpected. He breaks off Saba's head, the talking part, takes a sword, opens a portal, and says, To be continued. Basically, he just began the events of Shattered Grid. Yeah. So they have more Swan Babu stuff with little dream sequence stuff. Really fun stuff here. And they kind of wrap it up here with them and go back to their, well. Go back to Rita. Yeah. Really good stuff here. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Oh. <laughs> Stan Lee. I thought that was funny. Yep. Great stuff here from Minor Power Rangers Volume 6. Yeah. Who knows when this will be in the comic. Yeah. That's actually from Season 3 of Minor Power Rangers. Uh, the Cocker Ranger from the Sentai footage. Yep. But yeah, absolute great comic here. I give this book a 10 out of 10. Next up is Saban's Go Go Power Rangers Volume 2. Mm -hmm. Yep. Let's go issues 5 through 8. Yep. Yeah, apparently in the past of 10,000 years ago, you have Rita at a higher power before she gets imprisoned. Yep, so, still not long after the events of the pilot episode, because that's where this comic takes place. So they're all dealing with various other things, like teenage stuff, probably working for some kind of think tank. This actually was mentioned in the Minor Power Rangers that Billy did eventually try to try out for this thing, but he turned it down. This book basically explains that plot point. And of course, Rita talks to Matthew. Confused. Abba, I'm not Rita. Yeah. Thinks that she's Rita. Rita thinks she's basically Kimberly. Okay, that's a nod to, like, Rita transforming to Kimberly. That is a nod to a fan film. Power slash Rangers. Directed by a guy who's a big fan of Power Rangers. It's more of a violent take on Power Rangers. And it was basically him, like, his own response to the reboot film that came out in 2017 yeah that's what this is probably a nod to that's my personal theory if i get a chance to read ryan parrots i probably will ask about that because it was real in the movie that we have jace currently marrying kimberly in the movie and him, her revealing to be Rhea Pulso all along and and tommy basically on the run and machine empire is taking over the world yes the machine empire actually won and here's the thing Rocky works for them. He apparently, he's also got he's also lost a leg. Zach also works for them too. He also we when he's introduced, you see him in bed with two women. I've seen a couple different versions of this scene. One version, they're wearing shirts. Other than one, you see him topless, and he says it's morphing time. We just morph his helmet, puts it on, basically beats up a guy's in Korea. Yes, the movie itself is all about twenty minutes, but it's pure awesomeness. But here's the weird thing about this movie. Day after it was released, it got sued by Saban. And then was put back up like a day later. Yeah. But trying to find this film now is a... I have not chance to... I haven't watched it in five years. 
But I liked it. I really did. So, more stuff here with Jason Matt, a character who I should point never appeared on the show. We have more teenagers appear on the sh- who never appeared on the show either because they never really went to the class very much at all. So, you have more stuff here with the team just getting getting along really well. And we have this cover here. We have Boak Skull and Kimberly on the cover. Now, as for what this could be homaging, uh, I'm not really sure. It could be any cover, per se. Now, this cover here, I know what this one is basically homaging. The Misadventures of Babysitting. Yes. That's what this one is referencing. Yeah, then we have basically Rita over time. Where apparently she meets... This is where we meet SWAT. Where apparently she's offered it. And apparently Rita's got a little bit less clothing around the shoulders. Yeah, wearing a slightly different attire than she usually wears. Mm-hmm. Yeah, then presently she's more covered up. Of course, more Ranger stuff. And of course, Gold I do is normal thing. Yeah, basically Billy Quest just interviewing with with the Grace's company. Yeah, lots of Grodars. It basically is standard Power Ranger stuff. Good dialogue. Football, something they didn't really do in the show very much at all. And it was a joke that Billy said, "Oh yeah, Matt, can we do Blue Ranger?" And I'm like, "Nope." Now this one obviously is a nod to uh, this one here. This is not the Teen Wolf. Yes, that's an 80s movie. Yeah. This one here, this this seven main cover. Uh I'm not sure where this one could be a modging. I have no idea, but usually this covers in the mod something. And then Molly a shark. And of course there's any billicate uh match on him. Nope, not really. He does run the team, and of course, well, you have Matt and Billy picking up Kimberly and Trini. Yep, of course, well, in the case of Trini and Billy, they're more like close friends, but they never felt there's no romantic interest between them at all. Uh, one comic version of Trini is that she got into a relationship with Zach, but that went nowhere. Yeah. We have high school prom, and of course, Mr. Chapman's there creating the prom home, the prom king and queen. Oh, it's homecoming, anyways. Yeah, it's only both going tension because he's basically just. Yeah, and of course the fake map for the monster. Then we have Kimberly and Spike in this cover. Not Spike, uh, Skull. The way they're holding, uh, it could be homaging anything, but I'm not really sure it could be homaging. <laughs> and of course you have more weird stuff happening here with the date at the high school and of course infiltration, just... Really good stuff here. Fun set of Power Rangers. And then we end it with an appearance by the Ranger Slayer, Kimberly, and Finst- the Finster, Fo- Finster 5. Yes. Basically leading into Shatter Grid. Yeah, then we have Power Rangers Day Off, which obvious homage to Paris Fueler's Day Off. I know because I've seen the movie. It's awesome. Oh, here's a common for, here's a common thing to think of you say off. We have the teacher saying, Bueller, Bueller, he's sick. Bueller, Bueller. 
or having just move film song Matthew Broderick. It's just so hilarious. Yep, just so fun here. Mm-hmm. Love the nods here, and of course we're gonna continue with this later on. Now we're not gonna have next volumes here. Oh no. Uh, the reason why we're not is because, well, I don't have next volumes on here for, I decided not to, because I don't want to be too bogged down with a bunch of Power Rangers stuff. So, like, I, it's the first time in a while I've reviewed any Power Rangers. Now you're probably thinking, why have I not reviewed these sooner? Because my library never picked up anything on volume four for some reason. It's like, it was not really a big, big demand to pick it up. That's why I think this is really good. I mean, really good stuff here. But, uh, I'm going to basically my voice i've done three straight videos right now i'm gonna hold off to my next comic corner i'll probably do it right after the great job will be defeated so i'll see you in the next video let's we'll do great job of defeated and one more comic corner we'll do a batman trade and a batman related trade okay thanks video bye